Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Good morning, I'm Caitlin Nuclo. We are following your top stories this morning. Breaking overnight, eight people were killed when a gunman opened fire at a FedEx facility in Indianapolis last night. The gunman is dead this morning. Police say he took his own life. Channel 3's Laura Podesta has the latest. An Indianapolis FedEx facility became the latest scene of a mass shooting last night. We have located eight people at the scene with injuries consistent to gunshot wounds. Those eight were pronounced deceased here at the scene. Several people are also injured and have been taken to local hospitals. This is a site that no one should ever have to see. This is a tragedy, but yet through it all, we, we will come through it. This man's niece was shot in her left arm while sitting in her car. She's fine. She's here in the hospital now. Ian Johnston's wife works inside the building. She was texting him during the shooting. And then it went silent for a while. So I came here just to see what was going on. And uh, when I got here, she texted me and she says, I'm OK. FedEx released a statement saying its thoughts are with all those affected and that it's working with the investigating authorities. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Well, for a lot of people, we're just going to be looking at some wet roads. But once you go up to three, four, five hundred 500 feet, it's a whole different story. We're seeing snow mixing into the Manchester area. And then you go a little bit in, uh, further into the hills, stores, infield, those areas. You're going to be uh, looking at some of those snow showers. So right now we've got some heavy snow falling across northeast Connecticut. We've got a ways to go for those areas. Ellington got an inch of snow over the past hour. Ryan Smith, thanks for sending that in. Here's a look at our satellite radar from a wider view. You can see that low is becoming stationary. So it's just going to wiggle its way through Massachusetts. And meanwhile, it's going to this is a scenario that's going to be able to pull in the most amount of cold air. So it's going to be really focusing that cold air into northeast Connecticut. So Tallinn and Wyndham County are going to be picking up some heavy snowfall uh, several places could get six inches of snow in that area. Meanwhile, Hartford up towards Springfield. We're looking at mainly mixed precipitation and down into the shoreline. Impressively, that cold air has made it to Clinton. So we are looking at a little bit of some snowflakes making it into that area. New London sticking with those light rain showers. The good news is for the Northwest Hills, this scenario is going to get you guys done with the storm the soonest. So you'll actually be looking at maybe some rain showers when it's all uh, into the afternoon. And this is what we're winding up with here. Roughly two to six inches for the Northeast Hills, coating to one inch on the grass for the lower elevation elevations one to three inches, which we already saw Union uh, up in uh, Canaan. Those areas get up to three inches of snow already. By eight o'clock, we're looking at northeast Connecticut still with those snow showers. Maybe we see some mixed precipitation this afternoon, but if the snow is heavy enough, it's going to keep it cold enough to keep those snow showers going. So watch out for some treacherous driving conditions all the way into 2 p.m. for those areas, uh, especially in the high terrain. But even the I-84 corridor looking at some poor driving conditions. Here's a look at Saturday morning. We're seeing some sun breaks. And then eventually we'll see uh, some sprinkles here and there. The sun trying to come out uh, too late by sunset, seeing some clearing, and then we'll see some more sun for Sunday. And the good news is that we're not worried about precipitation really for the weekend. 37 degrees right now in Hartford, 36 in Groton, 33 in Willimantic, 40 Bridgeport, New Haven. And wind speeds are coming out of the northwest about 5, 10 miles per hour. And those wind speeds are going to get a little stronger into the afternoon. And given how much snow is clinging to surfaces, tree branches up in northeast Connecticut, that's where we're also going to see the strongest winds as well. So we should see some isolated power outages for those areas. Tall and Willimantic, Putnam, the model is definitely also uh, reflecting that we should see some stronger wind gusts this late afternoon, early evening. So unfortunately, that'll be a factor. But a whole different story for western Connecticut. Those winds will be subsiding and also the precipitation will also be subsiding substantially uh, into the late afternoon. Uh, this evening. Here's a look at our high temperatures for today up to 42 degrees in Hartford, 42 in Enfield, 46 degrees in London. It's going to be a rough day out there. So uh, even if you don't have to worry about the driving conditions, you know, just wet roads for Hartford, Middletown, New Haven, um, you got to worry. It's just not going to feel good outside. So really uh, some uh, tricky conditions out there today. 55 degrees for tomorrow, 60 on Sunday and temperatures are eventually approaching 70 degrees by the time we get to Tuesday. Thanks to the sun trying to make a comeback here and no snow in the forecast after today. Just talking about some rain chances on Wednesday, uh, but today stands out big time. Only 42 here in the Hartford area. Well, this morning, there are some troubling statistics out of the Brass City. Governor Lamont says Waterbury has the most COVID cases in Connecticut, and it is also one of the least vaccinated cities in our state. You know, Waterbury can have a case rate that's, um, you know, twice as high as um, what you see in eastern Connecticut. 
So the state is going to ramp up vaccination efforts with more mobile clinics being deployed in Waterbury in the next few days. The pandemic could bring more changes to the school year in our state. Governor Lamont is deciding how to use money from the American Rescue Plan to make up for the pandemic based learning loss. Governor Lamont is suggesting rethinking the school calendar for the upcoming school year. But I, I think we got to rethink the 12 months. I think it could make a big difference and I hope this is uh, a year we can experiment. Tens of millions of dollars in funding will be used for summer learning programs. They'll be designed to help students who have fallen behind over the past year. Well, if you have gotten a Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, you will likely need a third dose within the year. The CEO of Pfizer says people are likely going to need a booster six to 12 months after their first round. From there, it will be an annual vaccination. Officials are still testing the timing of those follow up doses. He also added that the real world data shows the Pfizer vaccine is effective against the South Africa variant. Researchers at Stanford Medicine and Cincinnati Children's Hospital say they have started testing the Pfizer vaccine in kids as young as two. Stanford Medicine says it is one of five sites across the U.S. taking part in a phase one trial of the Pfizer vaccine in kids younger than five. A spokesman says researchers began administering doses to participants in the two to five year age group. Wednesday, the hospital says nearly 340 kids are participating and more will be enrolled soon. Thanks so much for tuning into Eyewitness News on this Friday morning. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Have a great day. Thanks for watching Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Watch us live wherever you are on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.